Welcome to this public forum with the candidates for Bismarck City Commission. I'm Anessa Pfeiffer-Johnson with the League of Women Voters and I will be your moderator. This candidate forum has been organized by the League of Women Voters of Bismarck Mandan and is co-sponsored by the Bismarck Tribune and Dakota Media Access. The League of Women Voters is a nonpartisan organization that promotes the informed participation of all citizens in their government. The League does not endorse or oppose candidates or political parties. There are two candidates running for election for one open seat in the Bismarck City Commission, and both candidates have joined us here tonight. They are Richard Borer and Steve Marquardt. The audience is invited to submit questions using the index cards provided, by you, provided to you. Viewers at home can phone in questions by calling 355-1312 between now and 7.35 p.m. tonight only, September 29th. That number again is 355-1312. This is intended to be a respectful exchange of ideas. Our purpose this evening is to provide voters with information about the candidates and their positions on issues that affect the people in the city of Bismarck. Now let's meet our candidates. You each have one minute to tell us why you are seeking election to the Bismarck Submit City Commission. Richard Bohr, you may begin. Thank you. Um, thank you for the opportunity to speak with you this evening. Um, I'm seeking office for several reasons. Um, I think it's a very important and exciting time in the growth of Bismarck to provide a framework uh, for its continued success. I believe the Commission will be making key decisions on the future of Bismarck, and I would like to be part of it. I also think the City of Bismarck can become more efficient in providing services and at the same time become more user-friendly. Um, and finally, I think it's important to have an operating business owner representing the citizens on the City Commission. Thank you. <coughs> Steve Marquardt, you may begin. I'd also like to thank the uh, League of Women Voters for uh, uh, hosting us this evening. I'm running for City Commission again. Uh, I ran in June, um, and then Mike Seminary's position is available. So, as I had mentioned at that time, um, with my leadership ability that I've had on the on the school board for eight years, I feel I'm a great fit uh, for the city commission. Uh, I've seen the growth uh, that we've had on the in the school district, and I think uh, with my leadership abilities and my background and expertise um, with working with this school district, uh, that I can help manage the the growth of Bismarck, uh, going around door to door, visiting with the, um, our constituents. Um, they like to see the balance that we that I would provide onto the uh, city commission as I have on the on the school district. I've worked with a lot of the uh, different entities um, while I was on the school board and I uh, can fulfill those, uh, uh, basically fulfill those uh, duties as a city commissioner. Thank you. And now we'll move on to the questions developed by members of the League of Women Voters, the Bismarck Tribune, and our audience here tonight. For our audience here to submit a question, please use the index cards provided on your chairs. Viewers at home can phone in questions by calling 355-1312 between now and 7.35 p.m. tonight, September 29th. That number again is 355-1312. Candidates have not been given advanced copies of the questions, and each candidate will have only 60 seconds to respond to the question. Please comply with our time restrictions so that we can get to as many questions as possible tonight. Our time will, timer will let you know when you're down to 30 seconds, then 10, and then stop. And now on to our first question. Mr. Burr, you are first tonight, and then I'll be alternating questions between the two of you. What do you believe are priority issues for the city of Bismarck for the next four years? I think the priority issues are uh, obviously. I, I think it's kind of a, a, a talking point and a and a frequent one I hear is obviously affordable housing, and just 
maintaining essential workers, I, uh, attracting workers, and having affordable housing is probably one of the biggest issues I think we will deal with. Um, infrastructure throughout the city, I think, will be an issue uh, with its expansion. Obviously, the um, taxpayers are asked to fund that, and I think it's important, obviously, to um, to have some a system and possibly look at at new alternatives for how we finance things, and uh, a new approach uh, to actual city development. Thank <coughs> you, Mr. Morcourt. What do you believe are the priority issues for the city of Bar Bismarck in the next four years? Well, uh, basically, it, it is uh, affordable housing, infrastructure, and safety. Now, that's one thing that us as a city commission are going to have to figure out what we want to do, where we want to spend that taxpayer's money. Um, we do need to have uh, a lot more young people coming into the into the city. Um, but with with that, there isn't affordable housing, and that's something that we need to uh, work with all the other entities, the, the chamber, the Bismarck Mandan uh, Home Builders Association, and, and get the, the communication aspect going. And that's basically what we need to do is communicate. Communicate with the public, communicate with all of our uh, vested um, uh, people that have an interest in that and to be able to work on infrastructure. Not just infrastructure as far as uh, roads, but also infrastructure as far as people. Uh, the other one is going to be safety. Safety is a big issue. Um, just walking around, knocking door to door, um, that's one of the main things that uh, a lot of my constituents have been visiting with me about. Thank you. Next question starts with you. The city of Bismarck has a plan for downtown. It potentially includes the development of an underpass, a plaza, and other urban futures. How would you like the city to deal with downtown development? Our downtown is, is uh, unique. It wasn't always that way. Um, when I uh, grew up here, or didn't grow up here, when I moved here in 1989, um, you know, there wasn't much for downtown, and it has blossomed. Uh, there's been a lot of work and effort in uh, a lot of people to, to be able to uh, get downtown the way it is, and I applaud them for uh, doing that. Um, and also, it's the vision of the of the city commission to be able to expand on that. And basically, like I had said before, it is communication with all the constituents involved downtown. Uh, the underground uh, on Fifth there is um, something that that we need to discuss. Um, we also have to keep in mind to keep a balance between downtown and on the north side of Bismarck, too, because we are growing to the north, um, as our school district uh, uh, has seen it. Um, so we have to make sure our infrastructure is there. But as far as downtown, we need to uh, keep going forward with that. Thank you. Same question for you, Mr. Gore. The city of Bismarck has a plan for downtown. It potentially includes the development of an underpass, plaza, and other urban futures. How would you like the city to deal with downtown development? Um, actually, I love downtown. Uh, my Both my wife and I own businesses. Uh, they're both downtown. Um, I made a significant investment in downtown. Um, I, I own the office building on the corner of 2nd and Main. Uh, I do, I understand, I have actually re read through the reports that in the master plan they came up with for that. Um, the, there's, a, there's kind of the three main parts to the beginning of it. Um, and they are kind of quieting of, of Main Street, uh, the actual plaza in front of the de depot, and, and Fifth Street, Street development. Um, of that, the, the plan calls for about $22.5 million in public funding to support those to start with. And I think it's important. I think it's a very expensive um, um, proposal, but I'd, I, I think it would be great. But I'd, I'd like to see how, it, how it's going to be financed. Um, because those are the, the three main things that they want to do to jumpstart it. Thank you. <coughs> Next question is for you, Mr. Borner. What do you think is the most effective way to provide property tax relief in Bismarck? Well, I, I think, again, I, I think providing um, services the, the, to, the city, or to the citizens of Bismarck and them be e efficient services. Uh, I think it can certainly be streamlined. Um, I, I, in, in our business, uh, there's, um, there's approximately, I, I believe it's about 15 or 16 um, um, uh, Bismarck uh, departments. 
we work with about 12 of them on a regular basis in our business and I'm very familiar with how they operate and I think there's some certain at least some efficiencies that that um, could be uh, um, looked at in in how quickly they provide those services okay thank you same question for you what do you think is the most effective way to provide property tax relief uh, most effective way is you know um, I think what we need to do is we need to visit with the legislator as far as uh, a lot of our growth has to do with some of the oil impact also and to be able to get some of those funds into our um, into our constituents uh, another thing is the uh, like Mr. Board said some of the uh, inefficiencies that are in some of the departments not saying all of them but there's some of them that we need to and that's when I had spoke earlier about infrastructure and not just dealing with roads it's dealing with people we had to make sure that we have the people in the right positions to be able to handle uh, the growth uh, of our great city to make it the way it is but I would uh, there what I would do is I would uh, visit with the legislators uh, to see what we can do as far as giving some of our tax money back uh, with oil impact um, because that is also uh, uh, one of the main reasons why a lot of people are moving to Bismarck and not all the way um, out west. Thank you. Next question is for you. According to the 2010 census, there are nearly 4,000 Native Americans living in Burley and Morton counties, including Bismarck. What ideas do you have for our city to be welcoming and inclusive to all the people who live here? One of the things that we need to do, and I know we, as far as being on the school district, we worked with the uh, different li liaisons that we, uh, for our Native American community, to be able to um, welcome them in and to be able to educate them and to understand um, the cultural differences between us. But that's just not our Native Com American community. That's everyone that's coming into our city. Um, you know, we have. Uh, uh, Lutheran services are bringing uh, uh, different groups of people in. So I mean, our city is growing, um, but not just with um, in ethnicity also. And we have to be able to be an open mind and, and communicate and communicate with our human uh, services uh, to be able to provide um, uh, different programs and services for those people that are coming to the city uh, to be able to help them acclimate uh, into our to our culture. Thank you. Mr. Borer, according to the 2010 census, there are nearly 4,000 Native Americans living in Burley and Morton counties, including Bismarck. What ideas do you have for our city to be welcoming and inclusive to all the people who live here? I think, um, actually, as part of the, um, the portfolio that the new commissioner will, will have, it, it is in governmental relations. And so I think it would be a, a very important and, and um, obviously a great thing to include everyone. There are many um, different ethnicities that are moving to Bismarck. Um, there's actually um, a, a, a good example of that is that there is a, um, I believe it's a Mexican marsh if that's moving uh, just a few blocks away um, from my home. And it, I'm very interested actually in, in seeing that. Um, I think with an unemployment rate of, of approximately 2.4 percent that the um, including them is certainly much, it's very easy. I, I think there's certainly uh, jobs available and I, I think um, employers will certainly be looking um, to fill those job positions. Thank you. <coughs> Mr. Bohr, first question, or this question. What do you see as the future transportation needs and how Bismarck will adjust to the growth? I, obviously, again, infrastructures and roads are going to be a big thing. The um, providing uh, public transit, I think, is going to be uh, become more uh, important uh, to the city of Bismarck and how is that funded. I um, also think that, um, obviously, Taxpayers typically fund uh, road improvements and that uh, type of um, thing. And um, I, I guess it's really to determine, I think the citizens really need to determine what type of public transportation they want. Uh, and and it, it's up to us, I think, to help provide a framework to determine how, how do we pay for it. Thank you. <coughs> Mr. Markport. What do you see as the future transportation needs and public transport here in Bismarck? A lot of cars going on a lot of different places. Uh, we, need, we need to make sure our thoroughfares and, and visit with 
um, our other entities that we're working with. Um, you know, as far as the school district, uh, when I was on there, we made sure that we visited with the, the city and um, to be able to let them know ahead of time where we're going to be putting a school, where roads are going to have to be going. Um, you know, just working with all uh, the different entities. Uh, basically, it's communication aspect of it. Again, we have to get out in front, be able to talk to everyone. This is what we're doing. This is what's happening. Um, I'm seeing. I would um, hope that we would have use a better efficiency of our uh, public transit, um, and to make sure that it's safe. Uh, that's one thing that when we had discussed as far as some of our students riding the public transit to go to schools, working with them was a safety factor. I think we have to make sure that. Um, that is a, a safe option for a lot of our uh, constituents and you know visiting and working with the police department on that would be a, a great attribute. Thank you. And the question is now for you. Mm -hmm. Many developers and home builders believe the city process for engineer review and inspections needs, needs changing to increase its efficiency. Do you agree or disagree and what would you do or what would you propose to change the current system? Uh, yes, I agree. That is one of the um, things that uh, uh, that I have spoken to many different uh, to people on, and that is one um, one issue um, amongst many. But base, you know, and that's where we have to you know work with the infrastructure as far as on the people side. Do we have the right people in the positions to do what they need to be doing? Uh, our job as uh, city commissioners is not to micromanage, but to be able to hire people to be put in those positions. Uh, there is some. Uh, uh, efficiency issues and that's one, one thing that we need to discuss as a city commission on how we're going to move forward with that. Um, you know, do we have to hire another person for the job? Do we have to hire, you know, there's, there's many different things that we need to discuss on that. Okay, thank you. Mr. Borer, many developers and home builders believe the city process for engineer review and inspections needs changing to increase its efficiency. Do you agree or disagree and what would you propose to change? the current system. Uh, I also agree with that. Um, we, my firm is, uh, I own an architecture firm. Um, I, um, we're very familiar with how uh, the process works um, at, and, and how many people are involved in that process. We have many developers, private owners, um, and, and homeowners that come to us and, and need to get their um, buildings um, finished. The issue is we have a limited uh, time frame to do that and as far as our seasons go, and I think the process needs to be faster. Um, a, a quick example of that is just um, uh, we just recently completed a, a project. It was a small warehouse. It was about 10,000 square feet. Uh, there were eight people involved in designing it, and it took two months. Uh, the city's review process took three months and 14 people to review it. And I think the process needs to change. Thank you. <coughs> Your question, Mr. Borer. As a citizen, where do you think city government has done a good job and where do you think the city should improve? I think overall I think the, the city does a great job. I, um, I'm, a, I'm a lifelong resident of Bismarck. Um, I have lived here all my life. Um, and I, I think it's a great city. Um, that's why I want to be part of it. Um, I, I think there's um, the I think the redevelopment of downtown that's happened it's happened for a few reasons I think there was a plan put in place to do that um, I think there were also a lot of people that wanted to see that um, completed and it it took both um, it took both public entities and a private sector that obviously financed a lot of the improvements of downtown and other parts of the area of Bismarck. Uh, to do that. So it's, it's really a collaboration, I think, between the two. Um, and I, I, I guess I just look forward to being part of it. Thank you. <coughs> Mr. Markport, as a citizen, where do you think city government has done a good job and where do you think the city can improve? Uh, the, the city has done a, uh, a good job in, in quite a few different areas. I think, um, you know, I agree with Mr. Bohr on a lot of those same issues, but I think what we need to do is um, you know, further edu uh, education, educating our public on what we're doing and how we're doing that. So basically, that's going to be on a communication aspect of it. Uh, we need to communicate with our people uh, a lot better. And I know that's easier said than done. We've done it on the school district too, and it all depends if people are going to come to the meetings or not and voice their opinion until after the uh, everything's said and done. Usually, that's 
what happens once in a while. But um, I would say, um, like I said, when I was visiting with our constituents, a lot of it is um, just public safety. We have a lot of people moving into the city. And we're working on it. You know, the budget showed uh, four new police officers, but I do believe we're still a little bit short on that. And that's one thing that um, people want is good schools and be safe and have a, a nice environment to raise their family. We're, we're doing real well in a lot of areas, but I think we're at the point where it's going to stretch. Thank you. What is your position on the current lodging tax, revenue of which is used for tourism promotion? Um, we, I'm not against it at all. We have a lot of people that come into the uh, city and we should be able to use that uh, uh, tax to help promote our city. Thank you. Mr. Bohr, what's your position on the current lodging tax, revenue of which is used for tourism promotion? I, 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 I don't disapprove of the lodging tax. I, I think that um, it could be used in a little bit more diverse way, I think. Um, generally speaking, though, I, I guess obviously attracting people to, um, to come to Bismarck and spend money in Bismarck, there's an advantage to that. And, and using the, a, a tax, um, a lodging tax, uh, as part of that um, certainly makes sense. Thank you. <coughs> Mr. Bohr, um, what are your priorities for the use of sales tax? Um, as far as use of sales tax, um, I th think, uh, I guess it just depends what, on what the citizens are looking for, I think. Um, as far as um, I can't think of anything specific that I would I would I would pick I guess um, I, I guess as the priority for, for the sales tax use, um, but I I mean it just depends on the type of uh, programs the citizens are looking for. Okay, thank <coughs> you, Mr. Marquardt. What are your priorities for the use of our sales tax? Uh, that's basically a uh, uh, communication aspect again, basically c communicating with our constituents and getting their feedback on what we need to do as far as the city and what they see that that tax needs to go through for. Um, we as a board would have to uh, discuss that and, um, like I said, listen to our constituents. So uh, it's a communication aspect and uh, visit back and forth and make the right decision from there. Thank you. Economic development is a public-private partnership with the business community and the city. Um, what is your vision of economic development and how do you propose addressing the low unemployment rate? How do we recruit people to fill these jobs? Offer affordable housing. That's something that we might have to uh, take some different looks at as far as how we're going to uh, have affordable housing uh, in the city of Bismarck to be able to have people come in um, to work in the, a lot of those jobs that are that are available that aren't being filled, so we don't have to watch uh, buildings that are closed, uh, businesses are closed because there's no workers. Um, when I was with the school district, we were worked with a couple different uh, uh, projects as far as the community bowl was a was a big one as far as uh, private and um, city. So it does it work? You darn right it does. Uh, it's it's a lot of work as a chamber. Uh, uh, can attest to that, but it was a lot of work by a lot of uh, a lot of people. Uh, the city also, along with the school district and uh, some of our private uh, schools also. So, um, does it work? Yes. Um, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bohr. Economic development is a public-private partnership with the business community and the city. What is your vision of economic development, and how do you propose addressing the low unemployment rate? How do we recruit people to fill these jobs? We do have issues if, if anybody's been out to eat lately. Um, they, I know that just recruiting and maintaining essential workers is, a, again, a huge issue. Um, and housing costs are part of that. I, I, think, um, I think certainly um, putting both private and public entities together to look at, I think one of the options I think would be to look at um, a Basically, I think an increase in density, um, possibly for a specific development. Um, I think there could be a pilot program for that, uh, where the developers and the city come and they kind of set aside the rules they've had in the past for development, and and look at what can we do better and what we how 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 we can attain that basically through both public and and private um, uh, funding or or input. 
Thank you. Um, I, I just got this question from the audience, and it kind of continues with what you were saying. How specifically do you think we can address affordable housing? I think just in the in the process that we go through, uh, one of the big things um, as far as um, affordable housing is really the cost of land to start with. So increasing the density um, of that, I, th I think, is almost only one of the only ways to do that. I think the city also needs to relook at what they allow for lot sizes. Uh, in much larger communities, um, lot sizes are generally speaking smaller. Um, and um, I think there's been some communities where they've had narrower streets, um, and which, um, and then they combine um, actually infrastructure within those um, between houses, or um, if you can combine utilities between them, uh, sanitary sewer um, is an example, and have fewer connections to main services. And um, there's a lot of it works in a lot of ways. Um, it just maintaining the facilities um, and smaller lot sizes and smaller houses. Thank you. <coughs> Mr. Marquardt, any other ideas? Any, how specifically will you address affordable housing? Well, that's basically about the same thing. I know the city is already uh, looking at doing a lot of those and implementing them into uh, all new and uh, um, some of the current, depending on how far the, the process has gone and, and a lot of the developments on the, on the north side. So I mean, uh, City Commission and has already been visiting with that and, and working on that same plan as we speak. Um, yeah, basically it, it's it's cost. It costs a lot of money. Uh, when we were buying land for the schools and to uh, buy land for the new elementary schools, land costs are extremely expensive. Um, how do we get around it? That's something that we're going to need to work with um, all entities involved, communicate this is what we need to do. Uh, the ideas are out there. Uh, we just need to make sure that we listen to everyone involved. Uh, get an idea and then make a decision from there. Thank you. What is your position on the idea of a new arena for the community? Is one needed? And if so, how would it be funded? Um, a new arena. Uh, the one thing that we need to um, you keep in mind is you know what are we trying to target or you know our what is our our aspect of it? I think something would be nice to to have. Uh, to be able to have larger concerts and and uh, and stuff, and it might, that might be a part of a public-private, um, you know, like the community bowl. Um, you know, one thing that uh, when we uh, think of something like that, we have to look at. Sometimes we're just not in the right spot. You know, as far as geographically, mm -hmm. uh, we're too close to Minneapolis, we're too close to Fargo, uh, too close to Minot um, for some of those concerts. So when the the concerts are coming in and touring. Sometimes it's just too close to be able to pull in enough people to be able to get those concerts and those and those dollars to be able to uh, offer those to our, our our citizens. Would I like to see something? I would. How is it going to be uh, funded? That's something that we're going to have to discuss. But like I said, sometimes just geographically, that's something that we need to look at to be able to bring people in. Thank you. Same question for you. What is your position on the idea of a new arena for the community? Is one needed? And if so, how would it be funded? I would certainly like to see a, s a, a study of where that could go and what the actual cost might be for that. Um, I think it's very interesting that the, the downtown um, redevelopment plan that was just recently adopted um, actually included some additional parking ramps for the um, that apparently m must serve the Civic Center. That, that It looks like the study included about Park, two new parking garages for 600 cars, if I recall. Um, I, so I think we need to look at, relook at that, and 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 see what can be done, or if it should be done somewhere else. Um, multiple funding, I really think. I don't think it should just be funded through one source. Um, I think both public and private development could certainly do that. Um, and I, I guess I, I. I think it just certainly needs a second look and a, a second, you know, option of where that can possibly go. Thank you. Mr. Borer, should this Bismarck City Commission collaborate with the Burley County Commission? Absolutely. Um, I, I've worked with both um, city and county agencies. Um, I think, and again, I, I think it's really, a, I look for, forward to an opportunity to work with them together. Um, one of the portfolios um, for this 
um, commission seat is actually a liaison between intergovernmental relations, and I would like to be part of that. Um, there's some wonderful people that uh, work for the county. Um, the county actually provides some services, I think, in a faster manner than the city does. Um, I think we need to look at that. Um, I've also worked with um, both the city and the county in developing their original emergency management facility in Bismarck. Uh, they're, they're, there's a lot of wonderful people that work in both the city and the county. Thank you. <coughs> Should the B city, Bismarck City Commission collaborate with the Burley County Commission? Of course. And then in my last position, I was on, on the school district where I was president twice. We had done that quite often as far as visit with the um, Burley County as far as the smaller schools. Um, Yes, th there's a lot of things that, that we can do and, and combine and, and be able to visit with um, with Burley County. Um, you know, we are the largest city in them, so I would hope that they would, uh, you know, have a, uh, you know, a, a seat to a certain extent. But uh, we, um, yeah, like I said, I, I've worked with them all before, and they're, um, to be able to go back and forth and visit and get an ideas and, and some different creativity, uh, our city is growing in amongst, you know, Burley County, so that's something that we need to make sure that they are uh, involved with as far as streets, uh, infrastructure, um, to uh, be able to get our people in and out uh, from the outskirts. Thank you. The question from our audience expands on that and says, with all the demands on the community, how do you propose to enhance the communication between the city commission, school board, park board, and legislative de delegation? How do we cooperate to save the community more money? visit ask basically they'd make pick up the phone and call i mean when we run the school district if we wanted something for, you know with the city you, you pick it up and call and to be able to have open communication between all entities involved that's the only way that you're going to be able to grow and as a community and be effective with it and if you don't have that communication you better find out someone that is going to have communication with that and work through them but you should have direct communication with all entities involved um, it, with uh, Mr. Bittner, if I had a question as far as, uh, you know, we're looking at this, that, as far as uh, it was a superintendent, um, you know, we had to uh, work together to be able to uh, get the uh, position which uh, Bismarck Public Schools now handles for Burley County. You did pick up the phone and call, and I think I have the background and be able to do that, to be able to communicate with those other government entities because I've done it already before. Thank you. Mr. Borer, with all the demands on the community, how do you propose enhancing the communication between the city commission, the school board, park board, and legislative delegation? How do we cooperate to save our community more? I think collaboration between all of them, it, it's, a, it's really a... I mean, it's in all our best interests um, to get along. It's not a, you know, it's mine and theirs. I, I really do believe that there's, like, again, I, I really do believe there's great people on both sides of the table. And um, bringing them together and talking to them um, and get, I, just getting to know people, I, I think it's much harder to say no to someone if you know them personally. Um, and I think um, community interest, um, it's really what's best for the, the taxpayer and what's best for our community. Thank you. <clears throat> what is your position on the use of tax increment fund, the TIF, for projects and programs? Um, actually, I probably feel a little bit differently than some people about that. I, I think the TIF uh, uh, fund is is fine. I think um, it's it's certainly financed uh, some things that probably wouldn't happen otherwise. Uh, it it it's provided I think for a better downtown long uh, term. Um, I don't. I think that there should be more oversight as to f how that is spent. However, I I I don't know that I agree that that the funds are set aside and and. Um, that the public has a, um, a little um, uh, say in what they're used for. Thank you. <coughs> what is your position on the tax increment fund, TIF, for projects and programs? Uh, I think it can be used, uh, utilized in uh, a certain, I think we need to take a look at um, uh, a different funding mechanism 
the TIF funds uh, take away from the, the school district and some of the other entities, but uh, with the last one, we uh, the school district got um, a lot of our money back that we had was proposed to us to begin with. So I think we need to have uh, discussions on uh, uh, different funding mechanisms uh, and to see if we even still use a TIF or if we use uh, uh, an alternative. Thank you. Mr. Marquardt, what is the first issue you will address if reelected to the Bismarck City Commission? First issue, that unfortunately there's many and not just one issue that, that, that I'm concerned about. Uh, one thing, um, basically visiting with my constituents in the last, uh, since I, uh, actually since June, uh, when I didn't, uh, people said, you know, Steve, you know, we you wish we'd get on there, but the, basically their biggest thing is, is safety in the city. They want to be able to to bike uh, downtown late at night. They want to be able to walk. Um, you know, we got a lot of people, different people coming into uh, the city of Bismarck, and with that is not all good people. Um, we have to make sure that our citizens are safe, the streets are safe for our kids. Um, you know, but we have to provide services for those people also. So, I mean, there's a lot of different aspects and a lot of different octopus legs that are going to go into what we need to do as a city commission. Uh, affordable housing, um, we have to also, as far as our basic uh, transportation, uh, roads, you know, there's a lot on the table, and that's why I think it's best at this time. Thank you. Mr. Borer, what is the first issue you will address? What's your priority if you're elected? I think the first issue is really to determine if if we are sh if the city of Bismarck is short staffed. I I think obviously there's some in the police department. Uh, is it building inspections? Whatever department, are we short staffed in order to provide the services to our to our um, to the community? Uh, I also think that it really needs some of our services need to be streamlined. I think no doubt, um, and I think uh, obviously safety and affordable housing. Um, the ability to attract essential workers is is huge for Bismarck. Um, it just with the unemployment rate, the what it's at, um, we ha we need to do something to maintain and increase the number of people that will move here. Thank <coughs> you. I'm looking, I'm looking through our questions to see if we've addressed them all yet. Just one moment. I believe we have. Do we have any other questions from the audience? Well, maybe I'll, um, th that's fine. Maybe we'll be able to open up the floor a little bit, give you each a minute or or not. <laughs> um, okay. And I believe it's the question goes to you, right? What is your position regarding the commission's override of the citizens' veto of civin civic, civ center. civic center expenses? Does that sound right? Mm. Expansion. Expansion, thank you. Okay. <laughs> what is your position regarding the commission's override of the citizens' veto of civic center expansion? I did not agree with that at all. Um, I, um, I, I believe that I don't believe it was it should have been interpreted that um, when the citizens voted that they did not want to spend seventy million dollars on an expansion of the civic center, that they didn't object to spending thirty. Um, I think it should have been it it should have had more public input to start with, because obviously there was not a consensus, uh, but of the citizens of what they wanted. Um, I think that came down to really that, um, I, I don't think, I just don't think that um, that's the way it should have been handled. I think it was handled poorly. Thank you. Mr. Marquardt. <coughs> Originally, yes. Um, you know, I had voted against it also at the 70 million. I, I think that one thing that we need to make sure that we keep in mind is we need to communicate with our patrons all the time. And if there was going to be something that w was different, uh, which mm -hmm. it turned out to be, where they just went with the 30 and, and didn't do what the, the citizens said, I think they needed to be a better job of communication with that. 
and to get out in the forefront and say, well, this is our needs and this is why we need it and, and to be able to do that. I think one thing, it's in the past. Um, should we do it again? Uh, heck no. I mean, if, uh, if I got uh, listening to my constituents and they're going to tell me one thing, that's the way I'm going to go. Um, one thing, though, since it is in the past, it uh, when we bring people in to conventions, that's one of the largest things when we go out to conventions, it brings people in. You stay there, you all of a sudden they're paying the tax, they're paying the lodging tax, and they're bringing people in because these uh, conferences are for days, not just overnight. Thank you. Another question. What should the commission do, what can the commission do, to help those making only $10 an hour with affordable housing? How affordable will affordable housing be for people making only $10 an hour? That's, uh, that's a tough question. Um, you know, that's one thing where we have to, you know, kind of look at affordable housing, but what is the answer? Um, we need to basically communicate with our developers and with the landowners and and get a, you know, that's something do we visit with the legislator and get more money in from the les legislative aspect of that? Or, you know, what uh, what are the different options that we need to do? Um, do they, it's tough just to tell a business, hey, you know what, the, you're only paying $10 an hour, we think you should do 15 y You can't do that. Um, basically, if you want to retain your employees, you're going to have to pay them well enough if your business is growing. Um, does the city commission, if anything, I think we just communicate with uh, all of our entities involved, visit with the legislators and governor, and as far as our oil tax uh, money, hopefully get something in the city. Thank you. Mr. Borer. What should the commission do? What can the commission do to help those making only $10 an hour with affordable housing? How affordable will this affordable housing be? That's very difficult. You're right. That That is a very difficult question. I, I think, you know, obviously multi-tenant housing, and <laughs> I suggest a roommate, unfortunately. Um, I, it, $10 an hour is a very difficult wage uh, to maintain um, that just basic needs, uh, to be honest with you, uh, just uh, um, as far as even health insurance and uh, housing, there that it doesn't leave much. It's very unfortunate. Um, how, to, how to provide housing, I, again, I, I think that's very hard to do, especially in our economy and what the cost of housing is. Um, I don't know that we'd ever be able to address affordable housing at, at $10 an hour, unfortunately. Thank you. <coughs> One last question. Hopefully it's easier. Um, <coughs> what do you see as the city of Bismarck's role in promoting active, healthy lifestyles? Um, I, I think, actually, I think it's a, <coughs> our community is great. Um, I think we're very fortunate in, I know the city is expanding, but we have great parks. Um, my, um, <laughs> my son actually um, attempted, my son is eight. Um, he attempted this summer to uh, go to, the, he, he checked it out, and there are apparently 48 parks in Bismarck, and he wanted to visit all of them. Uh, unfortunately, he wanted to visit them all on the same day. Um, we made it through 15 of them. <laughs> um, just, I think, get out and, and, and explore Bismarck. I think, uh, it's a, again, it's a great community to live in. Um, there's a lot of opportunities for that. I think our park district does a wonderful job. Thank you. Mr. Markhorn, <clears throat> what do you see as the city of Bismarck's role in promoting active, healthy lifestyles? I, I think if you just look at their, uh, the city's plan as far as some of the, the options that they have, different parks, um, we do a good job. We, like uh, Mr. Boer said, uh, there's a lot of them in town here. You know, sometimes we're just limited as far as our, our weather. Uh, maybe some option of some more winter sports outside. You know, that, that's something that the, that the park, uh, Parks and Rec need to uh, probably communicate with them. But, you know, being able to uh, partner with those uh, other entities and to get ideas and to work with uh, our builders groups as far as uh, different equipment and stuff in different areas as far as uh, playgrounds and stuff. I know they're working on uh, different options on that. Um, basically, it's just a, a safety issue. And like I said, I think, you know, from what I've been hearing and when walking around town, um, there is a definite concern, and we are at that breaking point, or that's we're stretched, okay? We're not broken yet, and they, everyone is doing a good job, but I think we need to keep o open communication lines 
and uh, just visit with the Park District. Thank you so much. Again, um, candidates, thank you so much for being here tonight. You will now have one minute to provide a closing comment. Mr. Marquardt. Thanks again. Um, and like I said earlier, you know, basically a lot of these questions are tough questions, but that's what we as a city commission need to do. We need to handle those tough questions and how do we react to them and how have we done in the past. I have the background and the leadership capabilities that I have shown already on the school district. And that's one of the main issues that when people are moving into Bismarck is your city, schools, safety, and then just overall recreation like what we just talked about. I was, on the, I was on the school side, and I think with my background, my leadership ability, I can help the commission move forward with a growing city as we are to make those decisions. Are there easy decisions? No. We have a lot of um, tough decisions coming down the road. And to be able to handle those and to be able to handle the public <coughs> input, which I have in the past, uh, working with the school district, to be able to sort that out and make what's the best decision for a great city that I'm happy to live in. Thank you. Mr. Borer, closing comment. Um, I, I really think Bismarck is an exceptional community to live in. Um, I am actually the third generation in my family to be born and raised here. Um, my son is the fourth. Um, my wife and I um, have actually purchased a house um, years ago. Um, that um, I, it's on the same street I grew up on. My son rides up in his bike up and down the same sidewalks I did. Um, I, I really want to be part of the community and make it a place that my son wants to return to uh, someday and bring his family up in. I think there's a lot of challenges to that. Um, I think, but I think I think we can do it. I, I think Bismarck, again, is, is a great place to live, and I just um, I think they're great citizens. Um, it, if you go throughout the country, I think you'd find that uh, Bismarck, um, the people in Bismarck, even with the new influx of people, are <coughs> wonderful. Um, they're people greet people, people open doors for people. It's a it's a great community to live in. Thank you, and thank you for watching. I want to thank the. Bismarck Tribune, Dakota Media Access, and the volunteers from the League of Women Voters for organizing this forum. Thank you to the viewers at home and the audience members here tonight for taking the time to learn more about the candidates and our issues. This program will replay several times on Government Access, Cable Channel 2, and will be available for online viewing at www.freetv.org in the eight days leading to the Bismarck City Commission election. Before we close this candidate forum, I want to remind you that voting in North Dakota is very simple, and you can find voting information at your county auditor's office and from the office of the North Dakota Secretary of State. Thank you, and good night.